Mr. Trump, we're talking about the burden that Americans have to pay, yet you have not released your tax returns. And, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't Perfect. Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? I don't mind releasing. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released. And as soon as the audit's finished, it'll be released. But you will learn more about Donald Trump by going down to the federal elections, where I filed a 104-page, essentially financial statement of sorts, the forms that they have, it shows income. In fact, the income, I just looked today, the income is filed at $694 million for this past year. $694 million. If you would have told me I was going to make that 15 or 20 years ago, I would have been very surprised. But that's the kind of thinking that our country needs. When we have a country that's doing so badly, that's being ripped off by every single country in the world, it's the kind of thinking that our country needs because everybody... Lester, we have a trade deficit with all of the countries that we do business with of almost $800 billion a year. You know what that is? That means who's negotiating these trade deals? We have people that are political hacks negotiating our trade deals. The IRS says ha an audit me. of your taxes, uh, it's, you're perfectly free to release uh, your taxes during an audit. And so the question, does the public's right to know outweigh your personal... Well, I told you, I will release them as soon as the audit. Look, I've been under audit almost for 15 years. I know a lot of wealthy people that have never been audited. I said, do you get audited? I get audited almost every year. And in a way, I should be complaining. I'm not even complaining. I don't mind it. It's almost become a way of life. I get audited by the IRS. But other people don't. I will say this. Uh, we have a situation in this country that has to be taken care of. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release. I will release my tax returns. And that's against my lawyers. They say, don't do it. I will tell you this. No, in fact, watching shows, uh, reading the papers. Almost every lawyer says, you don't release your returns until the audit's complete. When the audit's complete, I'll do it. But I would go against them if she releases her So email. it's negotiable? It's not negotiable. No, let her release the email. Why did she delete 33,000? Well, I'll let her ask that, but let me just uh, admonish the audience one more time. There was an agreement. We did ask you to be silent, so it would be helpful for us. Secretary Clinton. Well, I think you've just seen another example of bait and switch here. Um, for 40 years, everyone running for president has released their tax returns. You can go and see nearly, I think, 39, 40 years of our tax returns, but everyone has done it. We know the IRS has made clear there is no prohibition on releasing it when you're under audit. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Second, Maybe he's not as charitable as he claims to be. Third, we don't know all of his business dealings, but we have been told through investigative reporting that he owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen for a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. And I think probably he's not uh, all that enthusiastic about having the rest of our country see uh, what the real reasons are, because it must be something really important, even terrible, that he's trying to hide. And the financial disclosure statement, they don't give you the tax rate. They don't give you all the details that tax returns would. And it just seems to me that this is something that the American people deserve to see. And I have no reason to believe that uh, he's ever going to release his tax returns because there's something he's hiding. And we'll guess. We'll keep guessing at what it might be that he's hiding. Uh, but I think the question is, were he ever to get near the White House, what would be those conflicts? 
Who does he owe money to? Well, he owes you the answers to that, and he should provide them. He also, he also raised the issue of your emails. Do you want to respond to that? I do. You know, I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Um, but I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a mistake, and I take responsibility for that. Mr. Trump? That was more than a mistake. That was done purposely, okay? That was not a mistake. That was done purposely. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted, when you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. And believe me, this country thinks it's disgraceful. It really thinks it's disgraceful also. As far as my tax returns, you don't learn that much from tax returns, that I can tell you. You learn a lot from financial disclosure. And you should go down and take a look at that. The other thing, I'm extremely underleveraged. Uh, the report that said 650, which, by the way, a lot of friends of mine that know my business said, boy, that's really not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money relative to what I had. The buildings that were in question, they said in the same report, which was actually wasn't even a bad story, to be honest with you, but the buildings are worth $3.9 billion. And the 650 isn't even on that. But it's not 650. It's much less than that. But I could give you a list of banks. I would, if that would help you, I would give you a list of banks. These are very fine institutions, very fine banks. I could do that very quickly. I am very under leveraged. I have a great company. I have a tremendous income. And the reason I say that is not in a braggadocious way. It's because it's about time that this country had somebody running it that has an idea about money. When we have $20 trillion in debt and our country's a mess, you know, it's one thing to have $20 trillion in debt and our roads are good and our bridges are good and everything's in great shape, our airports. Our airports are like from a third world country. You land at LaGuardia, you land at Kennedy, you land at LAX, you land at Newark, and you come in from Dubai and Qatar and you see these incredible, you come in from China, you see these incredible airports, and you land, we've become a third world country. So. The worst of all things has happened. We owe $20 trillion, and we're a mess. We haven't even started. And we've spent $6 trillion in the Middle East, according to a report that I just saw, whether it's six or five, but it looks like it's six. Six trillion dollars in the Middle East. We could have rebuilt our country twice. And it's really a shame. And it's politicians like Secretary Clinton that have caused this problem. Our country has tremendous problems. We're a debtor nation, we're a serious debtor nation, and we have a country that needs new roads, new tunnels, new bridges, new airports, new schools, new hospitals, and we don't have the money because it's been squandered on so many of your ideas. But you and maybe and we'll because you haven't paid any federal income tax for a lot of years. And the other thing I think is important It would to be squandered out, too, is, believe me. 